Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Once again, another movie review, but this one is a very special one, and it's the one that I had a hard time looking for, but surprisingly found it. And it's also yet another movie that got the idea of adding Universal Monsters into the mix. And of course, sort of in a comparison with The Goonies, called The Monster Squad. That's right. This was, of course, another film that's that's co-written and directed by Fred Deckard, along with his other writer, Shane Black. You know, the writer behind Lethal Weapon, as well as so many films, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Long Kiss Goodnight, and most recently, Iron Man 3. He also made an appearance in the movie Predator as well. Yeah, playing a character Hawkins. You know, the guy with the glasses. Yeah. Well, um, this this DVD release uh, came out in 2007, celebrating its 20th anniversary at the time. And it's a two disc set and has all the special features and a widescreen print that's so rare that you never thought you would see this movie in that right aspect ratio because I had an HD copy of the same movie but it's in the wrong aspect ratio it was actually played in in 1.85 aspect ratio while this movie is in the right aspect ratio 2 by 35 because that's exactly how this movie first came out in theaters you know, back in August 14, 1987 yeah it didn't do so well at the box office you know like Night of the Creeps you know, which also came out in August. But it also came out roughly almost at the same time as all the other films that did, such as um, that terrible Garbage Bill Kids movie, as well as Masters of the Universe. Yeah, for the late summer, they really did come up with some more kids films. And this one, of course, was more intense than The Goonies, because this one has a PG-13 rating which the Goonies was only PG rated. Yeah, it does have some blood in the film, but mostly, you know, tame and everything they put into it. This time, you know, instead of just having, you know, the Goonies going after, um, you know, seek out some buried treasure that might be located somewhere between the treasure map that they found, this time it's basically, you know, the squad that goes around after those uh, universal monsters such as Dracula, Gilman, the Wolfman, the Mummy, and of course, Frankenstein. Yep. So basically they're just going out out to the amulet, so so that means they'll take over the world, you know, by the stroke of midnight. Yeah, it'll, it'll be the end of the world once it creates a vortex. After Ben hails it along with a girl to read the book in German. So, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry I don't talk about it this much, but that's okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, I got this set um, back at Target in 2009. I had a hard time looking for this, but they had it for $9.99 over there. It was worth it. A Blu ray release actually came out at the same time, surprisingly enough. Uh, which features the same extras as before. This one, of course, has a slip cover, like this one, because it looks very shiny. Yeah, even at the back, too. Yeah. All the rest of the special features. So, same as usual, and cover art. And it has, uh, there's something interesting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know, I, I don't like it when it, this happens. Uh, this one has the movie poster. This is exactly what it looks like. With disc one, you know, same cover art. And this two. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, but, it's a, but it's a genuine set to own. Especially when it has all the extras and everything, you, you never thought you'd see. 
it was perfect. They did re-release this on Blu-ray once again from Lionscape, but then after that, it, it went sold out. It was very hard to find now, so it's the DVD version. But you can actually get it online on Amazon.com or any other to find that Blu-ray version. And I heard that transfer actually looks very good compared to the DVD version, which looks more... Uh, which actually looks very good too, but almost... Uh, in a rough edge, but, uh, but I think it looked a lot better. Um, the Blu-ray had been re-released by all of films. Unfortunately, it has no extras at all. But the transfer is, is very, quite different. So it's not nearly as good as this one. So I think I'm going to stick to that one. But it had a different cover art, which I think it might have been from a second alternative poster. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if it's worth recommending, but if if you have the DVD, then I guess you'd be fine with that. But otherwise, I wouldn't mind getting the Lionscape Blu-ray release if I ever find it. And who knows? Maybe they might turn up at Goodwill or something if you ever get a chance, or, or the thrift store. And I'll pick it up and I'll definitely buy it. Otherwise, I can get it on Amazon.com if I have to. But it's worth having, and and I always enjoy this movie. A lot. In fact, I just watched it already, you know, just now, and never get tired of it. <laughs> it was definitely the most underrated film of all time, and I wish this movie gets more airtime on TV. And that goes the same with Night of the Creeps. It's definitely you know, the movie that deserves credit. So that's how I felt. So anyway, uh, the movie stars Andre Gower with Robbie Kidger, Brent Challen, who passed away in 1997 due to pneumonia. Yeah. He's been in some TV appearances, including Punky Rooster and Small Wonder. Yeah, Ryan Lambert, Michael Faustino, Ashley Bank, Duncan Rager. With Tom Newman, yeah, best known for his other roles he's been in, such as uh, the Two Fairy in the in the movie Manhunter, and many others that follow. Kyle Fudbolt, Tom Wardrove Jr., Michael McKay, John from Grits, you know, who later played Uncle Rico in Napoleon Dynamite, Stephen Mary Ellen Trainer from Lethal Weapon. Also, the Goonies as well. <laughs> Leonardo Camillo recently passed away, and, but he's always been best known as Scary German Guy in this movie. Jack Willem, Stan Shaw, who went on to do other films such as Fried Green Tomatoes and Cutthroat Island. And Lisa Fuller, Gabriel Dean, Jason Hervey, who later went on to do. Uh, the Wonder Years, who played Wayne. Yeah, he was also a bully in this movie as well, as EJ. But he was also in the movie Back to School, yeah, Police Academy 2, I believe, and, or 3, I don't know. Yeah, it was 2. And um, Back to the Future. <laughs> With David Provell and Dale Anderson. It's written by Shane Black, and it's co-written and directed by Fred Decker. The movie begins set a hundred years ago. A vampire hunter by the name of Dr. Van Helsing had a plan to stop Count Dracula, along with the three vampirists, for attacking the entire townspeople for becoming vampires. So he decided to use the amulet by using his diary to read all the German readings in order for the amulet to be open. Once it's complete, it opens into a huge black hole vortex which would open the entire thing and, and be able to shoot all Count Dracula and, and the vampires in, all the way straight to the hole, which apparently half of the people had went in there already. It yeah, blew them all the way around. Well, unfortunately, um, 
Dracula had tried the best to get the amulet from him. So at this rate, um, by the time present day finally came, which is 1987, all the kids had created a new club by the name of the Monster Squad that's led by Sean Clinshaw, who's played by Andre Gowell. The second in command and lieutenant of the Monster Squad is Patrick, who's played by Robert Kluger. And the third in command is Horace, also known as Fat Kid, who's played by Brent Chalum. He also hired uh, Rudy, who happens to be the a rebel, you know, who's smoking, and actually saves Horace's life from a bully by the name of EJ, who's played by Jason Hervey. And he wants up joining in the club to talk about all the experiments and and everything about monster-related uh, stories and everything about them and how to use their dark secret in order to wipe them all away, um, to kill them or any other. Yeah, so it became part of the club. A, a lot of um, there were a few uh, people that joined in too as well including Sean's sister, Phoebe, played by Ashley Bank, and Eugene, who's also the private first class, yeah, along with the dog, because he also spotted uh, the mummy in the closet. But part of that, uh, Dracula had finally came to the world to obtain the amulet before the Monster Squad does. So Count's uh, plan was to take control of the world and plunge into darkness, by assembling um, the entire most dangerous and monstrous allies, the mummy, as I mentioned, the gill men, yeah, from the creature of the Black Lagoon, the wolf men, uh, and of course, the Frankenstein's monster, you know, which apparently was already being you know, buried inside the box you know, from an old World War II bomber in flight. Yeah. In addition to free schoolgirls, you know, we all became you know, the free vampires. So uh, they were there trying to trying to complete his army in order to to find the amulet, which happens to be buried inside a stone room under the house that Dragula and the other monsters now occupied, and where Van Helsing's diary was found. The room also had the uh, wards would prevent the monsters from taking it. So the monster squad finds and removes the amulet and narrowly escapes with Dracula's clasp. Of course, they had to contact the scary German guy, as they referred to, you know, to inform them that the incantation must be read by a female version. So as midnight approaches, the squad has made their way to a local cathedral to make their last stand. But a lot of trouble has been going around once they are trying to you know, go after him. And suddenly Dracula had destroyed their clubhouse with a stick of dynamite. You know, as well as the wolfman trying to attack them, of course, with that one scene <laughs> inside the, the house where, you know, where, uh, <laughs> where Horace actually kicks, <laughs> kicks the wolfman in the nuts and he actually says, Wolfman's got nards! Oh, that's such a funny scene. Yeah, because uh, Sean told him to kick him there. Just to go after the amulet that they, that they took out from the house. Anyway, Dracula was also drawing the attention of Sean's father, who happens to be a police detective named Dell, who's already been charged with investigation with strange occurrences in town. Yeah, with the Wolfman, the mummy, and all the rest. So about, and it, but also remains quite skeptical about the supernatural causes. But he also receives a warning from the Wolfman that his family is in danger. So, as an in human form, so, so this was their plan to to stop him from attacking, you know, his son and all the rest of the group. So, once they finally got to the cathedral after they're trying to stop. The mummy started to attack them while they're, you know, making a chase all the way around straight to the to the mall, you know, because they're about to catch. Rudy had to use his arrows to 
just to stop the mummy and finally all the bayonets have went off and got killed. So once they finally made it to the cathedral, the doors were locked, so unfortunately the incantation had to be read on the stoop, which leaves the squad vulnerable. They enlisted Patrick's older sister, who's played by Lisa Fuller by the way, to help them. And and somehow time was only running out for him to to read the German. Because unfortunately, they, she was the only one that that could speak German, but it didn't seem like it didn't work at all. So a, as a result, they hired uh, they hired Phoebe to become the virgin and read the entire thing by having the German guy, you know, help him out to to read the incarnation as the rest of the squad had fend her off with the monsters, and including that one scene where Horace actually. You know, takes a shotgun and shot the gill man in, into his, uh, almost to his chest. And, <laughs> yeah, while well, EJ and the sidekick, you know, refused to help him and open. And he was saying, <laughs> he was saying to, um, Horace, Good job, fat kid. And he says, My name is Horace. <laughs> As a Cox's uh, shotgun. It's just fun. They're trying their best to stop them. You know, they had to use all of the techniques they use, and then once they finally uh, use the amulet and to open the the black hole vortex, as we saw earlier in the film, yeah, you know, they finally got rid of them, and, and they all disappeared, including the Frankenstein. And the rest was all safe. Until the the army came along, only to find out who the groups are, and, and that's when Sean over actually mentions it. They're the monster squad, and so that's what the movie is, as we speak, the monster squad. And I really enjoy it a lot. When I first saw it on HBO uh, back in the day, I, I was little when this movie came out, so I knew I knew that this movie was going to be like. The Goonies, but in, in in this sort of way, it was quite different because you know it had Universal monsters, so we can relate to this. And all the creations of the monsters were all created by Stan Winston, who actually went on to do a lot of movies up until his passing in night in 2008. Yeah. So he did a lot of creations on the monsters, such as the Wolfman. The, Gilman and Frankenstein. So it's really cool how they actually created all of that. Yeah. That's very similar to the universal monsters they use in all these films. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's actually cool that they got the team up together, you know, kind of similar to what they did with uh, with Alba and Costello meets Frankenstein. You know, you got to see, you know, all the universal monsters teaming up to open Frankenstein, so it's kind of sort of like a resemblance to it. But it had everything that this movie had, and, and despite of its running time, which was only 82 minutes, yeah, it's very short. You know, a lot of great casts that they had. I, I know um, I know one of these actors went on to do other films they follow. Yeah, it's a shame that the actor who played Horace passed away you know, from, from pneumonia back in 1997. He was very young. He was like 20, I believe he was 21 at the time when he passed away. He was very young. He, I think he also played a lawyer for a while too, you know, in real life before he passed. And um, yeah, a lot of um, a lot of great special effects that they put into the film. Um, it, it was amazing considering that this movie didn't do so well at the box office, you know. You know, during the summer, because um, it, it, it was a big summer, they had a lot of great movies that year, and and I, I would say, I just can't help but love The Monster Squad. It was another two favorite of mine from writer and director Fred Decker. It's such amazing that uh, Shane Brock, you know, who's been best known for playing uh, Hawkins in 
Predator, also the writer of uh, Lethal Weapon, but actually wrote a screenplay this smart and fresh to, to put in all these uh, crazy dialogue they put in, especially everything that's mentioned from the kids themselves. It had everything that they were going for, and and it's just really really, uh, really smart writing there. It's hard to believe that, you know, for such an underrated movie, this movie had a special place in, in any childhood out there. But anyway, uh, that's the Monster Squad. It's definitely worth watching many times already, including on Halloween night. So, if you have your DVDs, Blu-rays, you name it, or any other source out there, definitely check out the Monster Squad. It's it's a treat for the entire family. And yes, it can be scary at times, and yes, it's meant to be, but it's fun, and you never get tired of it. So anyway, I give the Monster Squad an awesomely good time, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.